Uh, so Adam gave you plenty of time to think about this and act on it. If you haven't done so, I really, really would appreciate it if you do. Because when I turn on this PS3 controller, I don't want it to pair to somebody else. So that would bum me out a lot. So to make sure that that is taken care of, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And hopefully nobody else steals it from me. We'll get started. I have it! Great. So we can get past that. Uh, as mentioned before, I'm Rick Waldron. You can stalk me on Twitter at rwaldron, uh, also at github.com, rwaldron. Everything you see here is there. Uh, I work at Boku in Boston. Um, a number of my coworkers are here today. Raise your hands, everybody. Make yourselves known. Oh, wow, only like two in the room? That's a bummer. The rest of them are hungover in their hotel rooms. Uh, you can follow Boku at, on Twitter at the uh, account here, at Boku, or check us out, boku.com. We specialize in open web engineering solutions for the future, um, because the future is very cool. Um, today, I'm going to actually talk about animating things with JavaScript. I'm going to build on Drew's talk yesterday and Cassandra's talk, but Cassandra's talk, you'll see the tie-in a little bit later, but more specifically, Everything uh, that you learned yesterday about the animation performance is fairly relevant to the beginning of, of, of this presentation. Oops, I went too far. Uh, so everybody is familiar with animating DOM elements, correct? Yeah? Yeah? Um, this is pretty straightforward. What's happening here? We are changing incrementally the opacity of this text from zero to one uh, over the course of probably 800 milliseconds in, 800 milliseconds out. Not very exciting. Uh, principle here is that we're altering the appearance of an element by modifying the value <coughs> of a style property at a given interval, right? Everybody knows this. Shake your heads, yes. You have to all stay with me. If you don't stay with, you, that is m stay with me, that is my failure, and I don't accept failure well. So what about canvas animation? See this ball appears to be bouncing around in the same weird uh, rectangular path for infinity. What is this doing? This is animating, but really what it's doing is it's altering the position by changing the value of the x and y coordinates of this uh, filled in arc uh, by redrawing it at a given interval, right? Right? You've all done this, yeah? Awesome, you're all capable of doing this, or at least a very at least understanding it, right? Great, fantastic, awesome. How about CS, uh, CSS 3D effects, right? See this little box is kind of feels like it's pulsing, right? Pulse, bleh, right? It, all that's doing is changing, it's scaling, right? Scaling the, this, this element, it's just a div, right? You could spin it around, woo! <laughs> move it along its, its x-axis or you know, even its y-axis. You can even change its left and top position with easing and make it appear to be wandering around the screen aimlessly. It's just a, you know, selecting a random number and saying, oh, this is where we're gonna go. It's not that exciting. I didn't even write this, in fact. Uh, these slides will be available later and you can check out the person who wrote the original uh, code pen that I borrowed this from. Borrowed this from, they have no idea. Um, but it's cool, right? What's the principle here? We're altering the appearance of an element by modifying the value of a style property at a given interval. You've all done this. You're totally bored with my talk right now. Like, this is not what I signed up for. So that's okay, because we're now gonna apply all of this to animating node bots with JavaScript. Yes, the exciting part begins now. We have to go over a few things. And yesterday, while I was explaining this to Mike Sharov, he says, moving objects in the fake world, moving objects in the real world. His words, they hung in the air. And I said, with JavaScript. <laughs> and so it was. <laughs> so remember, I repeatedly said, at least in three different slides, that the, the principle here is that we are altering the appearance or position of an element by modifying the value of a style property at a given interval. So let's read the emphasis parts alone altering the position at a given interval. Same principle, right? Exactly the same principle. 
So back in 2012, at Empire JS, the first one, I demonstrated a fairly, you know, if I were to critique my own talk, the material was dry. I was talking about uh, temporal tack, tack, ah, <laughs> temporally bound task execution. And what do I mean by that? I mean to say that like, I want to do something for a certain amount of time, and then I want to do something after that for another amount of time, but I obviously need to wait before this first task is done until the next task can be done. And I demonstrated this by showing uh, a demonstration of these two servos, right? This is, their, it's not really a loop. This is actually bound to process next tick loop, right? It's basically checking the time each time to make sure it's, it's still in order, right? And what it's saying is like, ah, uh, right, 500 milliseconds has gone by, time to change and go back to 90 degrees. When, that, when that's done, we could presumably say that we've reached that point and we'll go back to zero degrees, right? But they're moving independent of each other. I even made the crowd, uh-oh, I even made the crowd play along and recorded this great video of them doing that. <laughs> Not going to make you do that, unless you want to. Juan obviously wants to. <laughs> The point that I was trying to make was that, that your physical world self, because you are a physical world being, you exist uh, uh, in a, you know, a bound uh, temporal existence. Everything you do takes time, and you, you know, like from, if I start here and I walk over here, you know, maybe that took two seconds, right? Moving your arms does the same thing. That's all I was trying to explain. So what I also did was I introduced the first ever node bot biped. So before I move on, I want you to see how this guy walks. There is no control over the speed of these movements. They're all herky-jerky, right? These are just servos moving at the speed in which the data sheet that, you know, that they ship with says that they're going to move. You know, I just happen to have pre-programmed it to smartly balance at the right amount of time to basically make it look like it's walking. Uh, Successfully, I would say, right? But beyond this two degrees of freedom that you see here, which is, you know, the uh, <coughs> sort of hip and ankle, right? Times two. So two degrees of freedom times two. Keep that in mind. There's not much more we could do because we're going to lose accuracy and precision and fail ultimately at balancing if we get any bigger than that. But for fun, we could still dance, right? do this funny little thing. There's actually audio along with this, but that's all right. It's just the Johnny Five theme song music. You guys can look that up on Spotify. Uh, and then watch this later in your, on your own time with that blasting in the background. What we want to do, here's our problem space. What we actually want to do is create complex coordinated servo animations. What do I mean by that? Servo is a little motor that has a limited range of from zero to 180 degrees. One moment, please. Oh no, this is all sorts of frozen. Killing me. We plugged in? Well, when it comes up, that'll be there. Or not. Hmm? Nah, I'm not going to worry about it. One second. Sorry, it'll be totally worth it to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, while this is doing what it's doing, I'm just going to continue. Uh, their servo movement is basically a series of gears that are controlled by a motor. And the motor, depending upon how much voltage it's supplied and how, much, how long of a pulse in microseconds it's given, de determines how far and how fast, technically, with one speed that it'll move. The speed is based on the voltage and the gear design inside the actual servo itself. Uh, unfortunately, this leaves us in a pretty tough spot, right? We need to be able to do, to accomplish this coordinated servo animations thing, because we want to do some exciting stuff. We don't really know what it is yet. The solution, as it turns out, is frame-constrained servo movement. Now, if you remember from Drew's talk yesterday, he was talking about frame rates, frames per second. I'm talking about exactly the same thing. I'm talking about controlling 
the appearance of the speed of the servo. So like the perceived speed and actual physical speed of by moving at very, very small increments, but smoothly over a period of time, right? Animating it, that's all we're doing, right? We're animating it. Who's ever written the animation code from scratch? You will recognize what I'm showing you right now. To move the servo horn or div element or opacity from whatever point A to point B at an arbitrary amount of time, right? Because I don't want a fast animation or a slow animation, but I want to try to maintain you know, 60 frames per second. Fortunately, in the DOM, due to jank, you generally can't do that. But regardless, you understand where I'm coming from, correct? Right? So we start with whatever the current state is. That's the position. That's our last position. So for each of these frames that we want to create, uh, a, a change for, we need to calculate the delta by saying what the percent we finished so far times the distance we need to travel divided by the rate, uh, and optionally an easing function is applied and set the current, set the, posi the new position to the last position plus the delta, right? Right, awesome. So the solution that we're working on for Johnny Five does this, but it does this with an intelligent sort of relative to the current position slash to a central point uh, system in which you determine a center point when you initialize your, your servo object, right? And then you just move in one direction or the other direction by, by providing a relative value. Or say zero if you want to just get back to the center position, or null if you want to not move at all from where it currently is. Turns out this is really, really, really easy to remember this, this uh, programming pattern when you have, say, 12 servos you're trying to animate all at the same time, which I'll show you shortly. Now, the other part of our problem, so we, we talked about, that was the coordination problem. Now let's talk about the complexity problem. The complexity problem is, is that with a hip and an ankle, you can't really do much more than walk like a penguin, right? <laughs> that, that didn't get as many laughs as I had hoped. Um, <laughs> Self-degradation does, though. So what we want to do is increase the, de num the degrees of freedom. What is the degrees of freedom? Well, as I described before, there was an ankle and a hip. That's two degrees of freedom on either side, so a total of four degrees of freedom. Uh, you'll see this, uh, you'll see DOF throughout the rest of these slides. That's what that means, degrees of freedom, right? Of course, with more freedom comes more complexity. It's like one of those Spider-Man mantras, right? More freedom, more complexity. <clears throat> So before I bring you into the actual known bots that truly exist in real life, I want to show you a non-node bots example of why what I'm talking about is important, right? Because the whole idea, the whole thing I'm trying to prove and have been trying to prove now for two years and will continue to work towards proving is that JavaScript is completely capable, right? People ask me like, well, why don't you just use C or Python or whatever the hell language that's been used for 30 years on robots. And I say, well, I don't know, because I can do that. I could do that if I wanted to, but I kind of want to see if we can do it with a JavaScript, right? So something like this, right? This is a commercial practical application of the concepts in which we are about to see actually demonstrated. Not in the same medium, right? This, this is a, uh, a uh, industrial servo-based uh, manufacturing commercial robot arm. Probably you would see something like, I think there's a camera on the end of this, but you could probably mount like, you know, some sort of like space laser for attacking your enemies. Can you, oh, oh my, 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 hold on. This one, is this better? I'm sorry it's so dark over there. Um, okay. So you guys, you guys got the gist, though. That thing was moving very smoothly. It had a lot of control. Uh, obvi obviously, like, th these are programmed. This is uh, a combination of uh, the mechanical capabilities and the programming capabilities built into whatever software package has been created for this. It probably costs, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? But I want to do it for free, and I'm going to show you how to do it for free because this is the tie-in to Cassandra's talk from yesterday. That's not it at all. Hold on, next slide, there we go. I'm going to show you how we can do this with JavaScript. First I'm gonna show you some videos, then I'm going to attempt to show you live. The videos should satisfy the fact that the live demo might blow up in my face, 
right? So let's get an idea of what we're the first, our, our, our first guest here uh, has three degrees of freedom in two legs. We have is a foot, a knee, and a hip. This is my assistant, who in fact is me. Um, pretty great, we, we, we have like a connection. I know, I, he knows what I'm thinking, I know what he's thinking, right? So, all right, that's actually not that bad. You can see what's going on here, right? There is obviously a little character on the screen and there's a ball in front of him in my kitchen living room area, which I would like to thank my wife for letting me take over for the last two weeks in preparation for EmpireJS. Uh, what we want to do is apply complex coordinated servo animations in order to kick a ball, right? Kick a ball, seems simple. It's actually not. There's so much balance involved and so much timing that it's, it would surprise you about how hard that actually is. Except that once you figure out how to do it, and when you're doing it in a language that you're very, very familiar with, you're just like, oh, wow, I could take over the world. This is, this is amazing. I can totally create like military grade obstacle course maneuvering robots. This one has a whole entire sensory system that is independent from its motor, from its locomotion system. So you see it's moving around, it's walking on its own, but it also has this panning and scanning mechanism on its face, right? In a second, I'm actually gonna show you a close-up of what that looks like. So this, as you can see, was able to make its way around this wall and then through to the other wall. The funny thing about this is, is what happens is, the way it works is it sees an obstacle. It will stop, this is all very, very brief stops, looks left, looks right. What it's doing is it's actually stopping in such like minute increments and collecting a reading of the distance at that angle. And then it says which one, which angle gave me the clearest path forward. Right, we're gonna move and go that way. So if this was in fact the way to go, this would be the way it would go. It's funny because sometimes I try to show my wife uh, like, sweetheart, check this out. It's gonna make its way through this. It's gonna snake this way and deek right, deek left, and go for the goal. And it just walks around. And I'm just like, that's not what I wanted it to do. But it did the right thing, right? Like, it did what it was supposed to do, but not what I wanted it to do. That's artificial intelligence, as it turns out. So now what? You're totally capable of writing artificial intelligence with JavaScript. So I, I told you that I wanted you to actually see what it looked like from, from the front, right? So you guys can see this. This is the, that same robot from the perspective of an obstacle. So you can see these controlled movements. Watch this. It's like, oh, I'm too close. Look, look. And it has figured out that it can go this way. Now in a moment, the camera will pull back. And you'll see exactly what it walked around. Now, I'm gonna be fully honest with you, its foot got caught in the bottom of that little obstacle wall and I cut that part out. <laughs> yeah. That can't be fixed with software, unfortunately. But now, you get an idea. So, I don't know if you all noticed that it was fairly clumsy in the way it had to turn. It's kind of like limps when it turns. That's because it has no articulation in its hips. There's, so, your hips have, uh, you know, pitch, Ooh, that was actually a knee, I lied. Pitch, roll, and yaw. This does not have that. In a moment, we'll see something that does have that. So, but before we move on, I'm gonna actually try to demonstrate this. So, if you'll bear with me, somebody left this beverage here, but we have a cup, and I don't know if this camera's working. I'm gonna try to kick the cup. Give me a break. Oh, there I am. Yeah, spectacular. All right, so go ahead and I couldn't decide on like a reasonable way of introducing all three of these demonstrations, so I'm just gonna do the box that shows up with magical things in it. Oh, by the way, servo, I promised you earlier. See, it moved from this side to this side, back and forth. These particular servos are high voltage, high torque, which is necessary for moving heavy weighted items, 
which you'll see later, a demonstration of, I promise. All right, so real, one quick thing is yes, this is tethered, but that's because I don't feel like having any wireless fails at the conference, but you could easily make this wireless by mounting a Intel Galileo board instead of the board that's on there, or uh, you could do control it over Wi-Fi with uh, XB modules. But for our purposes, I'm going to assert control via this tethering. So, one second. What I'm typing is not really relevant, I promise. <clears throat> That's the worst thing that could have... Oh, wait, because I forgot to turn the power on. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that's... Nope, that's not working either. So the best part is, is that right when I forget it, I'm not even going to bother. Why oh, you got to be like that? Okay. You saw the video. I still have two more possibilities for successful demos, right? So don't worry about it. Anyway, you saw that it did work at one point. Unfortunately, not at the moment. We'll come back, though. We've, like, I've still got other robots. Uh, this was the demo slide. Ooh, fail. Okay, so we want to in keep increasing and keep challenging the, the potential complexity here, right? That, that was our goal. Complex coordinated servo animations. We can't just stop at three uh, degrees of freedom on either leg or maybe only having two legs, especially when there's a whole world that has, you know, we have a tibia, a femur, uh, and coxa here, but four of them because we might need to control a, a quadruped, right? So this one's going to demonstrate how it will control its own balance as it moves from one leg to another, waving one leg at a time, right? So in order to time these, we need very, very precise control over each servo. And we can do that with JavaScript. It's not, this is not like a limited to C only thing. As you can see, it's perfectly possible. Here, we'll watch that again, just to give you an idea. See, you notice each one moves right in time to make sure that it balances, and otherwise, the robot would just fall over. You could speed that up, and it looks kind of like dancing. <laughs> now, here's where I really actually want audio, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a shot. This one, if, if, you, if you make, if you take that last example, right, and you actually make the degrees to which the, the lifting wave arm a little bit more dramatic, so say from like a 45 degree lift to like a 90 degree lift, it kind of looks like a child throwing a temper tantrum. You can hear that as it's smacking the floor. It's just like, oh, I don't like going to school, <laughs> right? Um, of course, most robots are health nuts. This one likes to do push-ups down at the beach. <laughs> Show us how it's done, right? But how else would I be able to do that had I been restricted to the, the, the servo's default speed? Remember that first video with a little penguin walking bot? You know, that, that would have been really clumsy. It would have been very herky-jerky. It would have just been like, <laughs> all weird. Like, but this, right, like, comparatively is very smooth. Like, look at the way those muscles flex. As it does its muscle beach push-ups. Just kidding. That's my kitchen floor, not much muscle beach. And those aren't muscles, they're robot legs. Um, additionally, we probably don't want to just stand in place like it's a quadruped, it's meant to move around, right? So when we can control individually the speed of each servo, right, with a fine precision, we can make robots with four legs that walk around my living room and kitchen floor area. Maybe we can watch that again. Fabulous. Ah, uh, come, come to me. I'll go away. Maybe you will come back to me in a second. Nope, 
end of video. So here we go. We're going to give this a shot. I don't know if it's going to happen. I can't promise anything apparently at this point, but I'm willing to put my, my ass on the line for entertainment. Ooh, that's a good sign. It is not. It's nice and it's waving. Oh, there we go. So, <clears throat> as I promised, push ups. Yeah. Oh, camera, I'm sorry. God. Yeah, there you go. Come on, get over here. All right. <laughs> um, I actually don't remember. I'm just going to kill it. And then, one second. Oh, oh, get back up. What was the, one second, cheat, oh man, give me a second here, sorry about that. Guess not what I wanted, one moment please, while I check myself. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, 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 there we go, no, we'll get to, yeah, I'll just go to walk, why not? <clears throat> ah, don't go off the side. Go that way now. This is programmed in JavaScript, so it's prone to weird errors in cer certain <laughs> browsers. The real world browser. No more batteries for you, buddy. So, success. That's fantastic. <laughs> but I'm not done. So that, that's awesome. Uh, but so far, you've noticed that, that both of these robots are just three degrees of freedom uh, per leg. So we had two legs and then we had four legs. But we need to really step it up a notch. Really, really take that complexity uh, problem space to the next level because I can't try to go to, you know, say like Mech Wars and be like, hey guys, look at my JavaScript robot bot and they're like, yeah, three, three degrees of freedom, get out of here. So what we need to do is really build something important with a foot, an ankle, a knee. Uh, here we go, that's the hip pitch, roll, and yaw. That's a fully articulated hip you're going to see momentarily, folks. How well is that coming through? That's pretty good. Hopefully the demo will, will, will come through momentarily, but I want to show you a few really, really important uh, massive strides for success of JavaScript uh, robotics in the form of showing off this ridiculous robot. Right now, this robot has six degrees of freedom in two legs, which means that it can do great and amazing things like lift and balance its insanely top-heavy self on one foot. You notice how each of those movements is, is, is very precise, very, very well-timed. Like, like, remember, going back to that other problem, the little penguin bot, there's no way we could have made those same movements, right, if we hadn't had a mechanism by which to control the speed uh, of, of, of these mechanical movements, right? Because otherwise, this thing would have just fallen over. It does. It does all the time. Just giving you a warning. It falls over all the time with, regardless. Uh, which is actually, remember I mentioned the, the optional easing. That's where that comes in. So Johnny Five is going to soon feature servo animation easing capability. So you'll be able to do in, out, bounce, quad, whatever the crap you want to do, right? But for servos, right? Because it's just JavaScript. It's just JavaScript. The, the principles are all still the, exactly the same. Um, this is the stream of these videos. Okay. Now, here is another demonstration of these slow and precise moves forward. You see the center of gravity moves about as far back as it can without falling, because it will definitely fall if you go any further than that. But it gives you an idea of, of, of the range of motion that this is capable of. This is all leading up to something. Um, so as I had mentioned before, right, these guys are real health nuts. This, this one does yoga. Um, 
do some stretches. There we go. Sh show off those calf muscles. Again, there are no muscles. I'm lying when I say muscles. But it shows the ability to do these balanced, coordinated movements over six servos on two legs. That's 12 servos in total, which is like incredibly complicated uh, process by which to balance and to maintain, you know, the, the unfortunate top heaviness of this particular robot. Uh, I, I would say that next robot won't be quite as top heavy. Uh, so you might have noticed that it has, one second here, you might have noticed that it has a, a sensor mechanism on the front, similar to the first robot we demonstrated, the one that totally failed its demonstration. This I want to show you because remember I said that, uh, that, that it was interesting how the, the first robot was able to independently move side to side while making decisions about which way the legs were going to go. This is a whole new ball game when you double the number of degrees of freedom in the legs and double the number of degrees of freedom in the looking mechanism. So before I start this video, what I want you to pay attention to is the sound you're going to hear in the first few seconds. The looking mechanism side to side is going to start off by doing 10 frames per second on the first sweep. Actually, it's going to, yes, 10 frames per second on the first sweep. And then it's going to be 20, then it'll be 40, then you'll see the last sweep is 60 frames per second, and it's going to maintain that. So this is, I intentionally programmed it to have these like awful, jittery, buggy things just to demonstrate what the, di what the difference looks like. So listen, I'll, I'll try to be quiet. Right? Pay attention to the ticking noise. And now, momentarily, you're going to see that it combines in the, its own first demonstration the, the balancing from left to right to show you today how we can do this complete uh, 20 degree to 160 degree left to right, and I think it's like uh, 90 degrees up and down, back and forth, to scan and pan around while also independently moving uh, the, the, the locomotion mechanics of, of the robot with it seemingly ease. <clears throat> now, I'm not sure how many of you follow me on Twitter, but you might have recalled the other day when I said, hey, anybody who knows ballet, what is this? Right? Does anybody remember why me asking that? Yeah? No? Turns out it's called an arabesque. And here's why I asked. I wanted to show you here at EmpireJS this program, JavaScript programmed robot doing an arabesque. Want to see that again? I was like jumping around my living room like a madman when this worked. Then I went to show my wife and it promptly face planted the second time I did it. Yes. Yes. Pretty exciting, right? Um, it's exciting enough to feel confident saying that I think JavaScript is capable, right? I think, I think that we're getting, I, I feel pretty good about saying that in a year's time, we'll be able to say, yeah. Uh, you know, that, that commercial, commercial industrial robot arm could very easily be programmed with JavaScript. Why not? Uh, Jason Huggins is already producing the Tapster bot, which is a, a, a Delta bot programmed with Johnny Five. A Delta bot is a three-armed, uh, excuse me, it's on three axes with a center point, and that's the one that plays Angry Birds. You guys recall that? This is being used to test uh, touchscreen device applications. Pretty neat, right? Program to Johnny Five, so you can write your web application and then also write your robot testing device in JavaScript, right? That's pretty awesome. So that's actually the last video demonstration. Now we're gonna try real life demonstration. <clears throat> so disclaimer here slash disclosing information to you that's relevant. I only started working with this particular piece of hardware uh, about a week and a half ago. So bear, just bear with me. <laughs> that's all I ask. <laughs> 
I mean, you've seen the videos. That's pretty fun and exciting. Let's see what we can do in real life. I'm going to, what the, did I just lose that screen up there? Like, back, sorry. I'm not sorry. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to, what happened? Sorry, one sec. Okay. <clears throat> this one actually requires a significant amount of power. Uh, you see here, the diesel battery. Uh, all of these servos are actually uh, high voltage servos. Instead of the normal four to six volts, they run on 7.4 volts and they suck this thing dry very quickly, uh, especially when doing ballet. Because um, I guess ballet is really taxing on a robot. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> Get up. Oof. Power. Hold on. I'm going to do that over again with the power actually turned on, so it's a little bit more interesting and fun to watch. Because because it will stand up on its own. <laughs> uh, whatever. Actually, you know what? I'll just demonstrate it live. Okay, don't fall back. All right, ready? So sometimes when it acts up, I tell it to take a seat, right? But when I need it to actually help me do stuff like fighting enemies or something, like stand at attention and stand up straight, please. Um, but when you want to teach a robot how to walk, you also need to teach it how to lean and lift uh, its opposing appendages while leaning. I don't trust this table. It's kind of uh, concave, unfortunately. I have a level with me because, right, who doesn't bring a level with them to, the, to a conference? <laughs> um, also, incidentally, while working on this, this project, right, used uh, Ricardo de Pena's uh, dual shock controller. So basically, see this controlling ankles? This is dope, watch this. Left ankle is at 115 degrees. Right ankle is at 90 degrees. Controlling right ankles. Controlling left knees. So now I can adjust each. Get over there so they can see what's going on. See, maybe, how about that? So, and then I'm like, oh. Left knee is at 119 oh, degrees. Cool. Uh, you know, and then you switch to, where, let me go up to, probably, yeah, hip roll. You want to adjust that a little bit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Wrong way. Settle down, buddy. Uh, and then I'm going to adjust the left hip roll out a little bit, and then back to the right hip roll, get it standing back down again. Awesome. And then, of course, I can... Tell us to stand back up. See, I don't know if you noticed how smoothly I did that from its position. Impossible without constra frame constrained servo movements, right? And it's just JavaScript animations. That's really all there is. So uh, last night I did something with this robot that I had actually not done yet. So let's hope it happens again. <clears throat> So like I said, I just started working with this about a week and week and a half ago. Because when you can lean and shit, when you can lean and lift, this also means you can walk. It's a little slow. It's a little bit, eh, but I just did it last night, so that's cool, right? Stay still. Sit down. Uh, where is sit down? Oh, there it is. So, so what? So why? 
So I already told you, you know, about the goal. The goal is really to uh, just explore. I've, I spent the last year, uh, thanks to Boku for giving me so much free time to work on this and for financing uh, most of, of the, uh, the cost intensive uh, aspects of this. But because the goal is that we actually, well, sorry, at Boku we actually firmly believe in, in crafting a future for JavaScript that's outside of the browser. You know, we've worked a lot on Firefox OS. So, like, we're basically obsessed and in love with the idea of JavaScript and hardware uh, uh, coexisting as a, uh, a, a programming ecosystem. So, the idea is that, yes, you could argue with me all day long that, sure, you can already do all this stuff. This is just a robot kit, right? This is just some uh, prefab uh, aluminum parts. Nothing really exciting there. What's exciting to me is that this is the first time this particular robot kit or prefab set of, of, of brackets and braces and gizmos, right, has been programmed and controlled solely by JavaScript, right? This is, is to me, the most exciting thing, right? So when I say, so what? Remember what Cassandra was saying yesterday, right? Why, why are we doing this? Because we can and because we should. So if you can write JavaScript animations, who here can write JavaScript animations? You can also program robots. <laughs> if you want to follow the project, the GitHub, Johnny5, and I made this awesome list of people. It's not complete. I keep adding to it as it comes up. People to follow on Twitter who say, awesome things about JavaScript programming and are very involved uh, in JavaScript robot programming as well. And you can learn a ton from these people. So that is the conclusion of my talk. Thank you very much, EmpireJS. And uh, I'm not taking questions. We can talk outside.